everyone. Welcome to Lex Talk World Talk Show presented to you by Clickaway Creators. Today we have Mr. Gopal Krishnan, who is a dynamic and result-oriented legal professional with over four decades of experience in legal areas encompassing banking, corporate, capital market, and business laws, also including cross-border transaction and procedures, human resource issues, litigation, and international arbitration. He has also worked as legal advisor heading the legal operations and human resources group of asset reconstruction company. Prior to that, and for 14 years, he was also serving as the president and the head of law department of Access Bank Limited. Hello, Mr. Gopal Krishnan. How are you? Hello. Good, good. How are you? I am good. Thank you for asking. So uh, we're really excited to know about your uh, journey as a legal professional so far. So please enlighten us. Yeah, uh, I think, you know, what happens is, you know, see, I was born uh, in a business family because my parents are in, in the sense, not my father, but my uh, father, grandfather's side, everybody was into business because, you know, we were stockists for many, many of the uh, branded products and, you know, we were known as uh, business people. So naturally, my father also turned into uh, practicing. He was a lawyer and, you know, he qualified as a lawyer. And he practiced into income tax and sales tax and commercial taxes. At the time, it was known as income tax, sales tax, and commercial taxes. So coming into that family, you know, business was always in my mind. And, you know, what I heard right from the very beginning in the dining table or whenever we talk is about income tax act, sales tax act, and about accountancy. So my first intention was that, you know, I should become a chartered accountant. And, you know, so, so that, you know, that will help me in this. But as I went to the college, you know, I mean, I took a liking for English literature. And therefore, you know, my graduation was in English literature. At that point of time, this five-year law course was not there. And, you know, we had only this three-year law course. So you have to be a graduate to go to a law course. So after doing my uh, graduation in English, I started a liking for, you know, even today, that liking is there, lit literature and Shakespeare and, you know, Keats and poetry and all those things. And then I thought, you know, that I should take a post graduation in English literature and then, you know, I should be writing something and I should be teaching people. But my father, because coming from a very conservative family, the, my father was dead against that. And, you know, he said that you have to go for a, uh, what do you call, professional course. And given a chance, he would have liked me to go for MBBS. But unfortunately, I'm not, I was not a science student. And therefore, you know, the next best option was to go for law. And I did law with much reluctance in the beginning, in the sense, you know, say I was not uh, thinking that, you know, it's a boring thing and, you know, thereafter, after that, I started practice with my dad only because, you know, it's like going and sitting there and, you know, for about the uh, um, first few years, I was still in the college mode and, you know, I was not very serious uh, in uh, helping him or, you know, attending to the cases or something like that. But he was a very little worried about it and he used to tell my mother also about it and saying that, you know, ask him to get more serious into the profession. But all that changed is that, you know, once uh, when uh, he was arguing a case in uh, in the sales tax tribunal in uh, in Kerala, because I hail from the southern moon part of India, that is uh, Kerala and, you know, in the southern moon district, it called a city called Kualam and, you know, very next to like Mumbai and Thane and, you know, 65 kilometers away from uh, the capital city of Trivandrum. So what happens is, you know, when uh, that case was argued and, you know, uh, my father said that, you know, he was not feeling well and therefore, you know, he wants uh, a date. But I said, no, I will argue the case. And he was very hesitant and saying, what can you do? And, uh, you know, a 23-year-old boy, you know, what can he do? But I argued the case. I didn't have any preparation, nothing. What is there is, you know, my father talking everything, you know, I understood. And that changed the entire scenario. And that time, the tribunal member, the judges said, told my father that he can retire and his son can take over. So that was the greatest first award I got. It. And after that, I was not very, uh, I mean, I was, not, I was a little uh, hyper and, you know, a little, I'm not very uh, satisfied with that. And therefore, you know, I need to stay. I was much interested in company law. So I used to read the company's prospectus, which used to come in papers at that point of time, the chairman's speech containing everything. So I wanted to study company law and, you know, I wanted to be a practitioner of company law, which was uh, that time in Kerala, that was not much of a uh, in practice. And therefore, you know, 
I thought that I should get into somewhere where I have to learn company law. And therefore, I applied for a job in uh, the erstwhile UTI, that is Unit Trust of India, which was a part of uh, the central government. It was a statutory corporation, which was a mutual fund and a term lending institution. So there I got selected. It was a part of RBI and I got selected as a middle management officer in the law department. And there I learned the nuisances of in all kinds of uh, uh, documentation. And uh, I completely, it was something from a practice, I went to a job much against the wishes of my family. And from there, there was no looking back. And then, you know, I was uh, able to uh, do the documentation. And, you know, it was a whole new world for me about the company law and, you know, about uh, uh, the real estate uh, issues in, in, in Mumbai. At the time, it was Bombay and, you know, the stock market, you know. So it is a complete transformation. So that platform is the beginning of my growth into the commercial now. And then in 1986, uh, um, the uh, first time, no, 1991, you know, the consumer protection law was enacted. So what happens is UTI had the biggest, UTI was the biggest, uh, uh, or, you know, at that point of time, it was a monopoly and they were the only people who were selling mutual funds, you know, the, the mutual fund scheme was there. So in 1992, after Harshit Mehta scam, they had a, a scheme called Master Game, and that became a hit. And it is still a Guinness Book of World Records because 60 lakhs people applied for it. And the the uh, the registrars nor UTI was uh, geared to that. And therefore, what happened is a lot of people's uh, certificates went to somebody, and they got it transferred. And you know, so a lot of consumer cases started piling up on them and arrest warrants were issued against the chairman and all those things. So as usual, they called me and said that you have to handle this. Said at one point of time, I was flying from one city to other to attend to these cases and there were about, I was handling about 7,500 consumer forum cases. At that time, it's a beginning thing. And therefore, and I had a challenge because then, you know, seeing the volume, somebody came and some institution came and said that we will settle with everybody. You give me two, cro you give us two crores of rupees. We will settle with all the complaints. When the chairman uh, at the time, Dr. Debe called me and told me that this is the suggestion which has come from a very reputed person. I said, uh, no, I will do it. If it is to be settled, I will do it and not to a third party. And then, you know, I was given the honors and I settled uh, a lot of cases by having a kind of, you know, Adalat, I go there and, you know, I go to each of the branches, call them and in Adalat. And we settled it. Many of the cases for about, you know, three, three and a half crores of rupees was settled. Then in 1994, the bank started and, you know, the bank was, uh, UTI bank was started by UTI. It was promoted by UTI. And suddenly, uh, the erstwhile chairman of uh, UTI bank, the first chairman of UTI bank retired and a new chairman was uh, inducted. That chairman was my executive trustee of UTI, Dr. P.J. Nye. So he called and said that, you know, I have to, I'm going to the bank. Why don't you come to the bank? You know, because there is no law department. I said, okay, I'm ready to go because that is another new experience. But uh, let me tell you, I had no idea about banking laws and banking law in practice. But it is a question of survival. And I went there and I feel, and, you know, I became a, a bit of, you know, uh, a little bit of authority on banking practice and law. And, you know, I had the good fortune to uh, write a chapter, which is now even today, it is uh, um, a, in a book, which is uh, prescribed for people who have to write for the CAIAB examination. Okay, that is legal and operations of uh, the banking law. That was, uh, that chapter was written by me. And then I went there and, you know, I grew with the bank. If at all today what I am, you know, that is because of Access Bank. So Access Bank grew, I mean, and one more thing is that in when in Access Bank, you know, Access Bank was earlier called as UTI Bank. And that name change was in 2007 due to the split of UTI into two institutions. One is the mutual fund was sold to somebody and the term lending institution, the investments were changed into a special purpose vehicle called SUTI. And, you know, therefore, you know, the, uh, the shares of uh, Axis or UTI Bank as held by UTI, the erstwhile UTI is now vesting with the SUTI, the Government of India uh, Special Purpose Vehicle. So then they said that, you know, you cannot uh, 
use our name if you use our name in 2008 onwards you know if it has been sold to somebody and therefore you know you have to pay a royalty so we decided not to pay the royalty we tried to purchase the the uh, the uh, brand but they were reluctant they were thinking that you know that has a brand value and therefore you know they'll get but we changed the name and we grew it's a question it's a case where you know the uh, the son or daughter took overtook the parent you know because then access bank became big rather than uti so i was involved right from the very beginning of that but when in the bank access bank is that you know my old when i started i said that my father was an income tax lawyer and you know i grew up in that uh, circumstances so i took the liberty of uh, dealing with the income tax assessments appeals up to the tribunal of access bank so they had a faith in me so they gave it to me so i used to appear before the tribunal i used to appear before the uh, commissioner of appeals i used to appear before the assessment officers for the bank that was in ahmedabad so no legal officer would dare to do income tax and you know that to appear it and you know they many of my colleagues said you are taking a lot of risk you know what happens if something happens i said my intention is very good if something happens you know i have to face the music that's it you know so that is something which and then access bank you know it was a big platform it was a big platform which gave me anything and everything from hr to branding uh, to operations and you know for uh, one good thing is that for the consecutively for six terms i was the member of legal and operations committee of the indian uh, iba and you know only i had to leave it when i left access bank otherwise i would have continued in their committee they never changed me because that kind of faith was there you know because a uh, little a uh, bit of uh, i make a little noise and therefore you know they thought you know that is some kind of a value addition is there and therefore you know that was there so if you look at me and after that after that you know always i had the urge to go back to practice you know this is like somebody coming from practice to their job and then back to practice and therefore you know in uh, i 2015 i uh, uh, after the access bank uh, my tenure i i became a, again an advocate i enrolled again in the sense you know my uh, sanad was kept in suspension it was a uh, voluntary suspension and i uh, renewed it and now i am back appearing before all the courts and you know nclt high courts and you know wherever it is there so what i feel is that the inherent uh, uh, risk or strength i took is that you know i was able to cut off from my ex- uh, my uh, profile as a executive and back to the square one where you know i had i had the courage i had the uh, the confidence that i can continue as an advocate also and not to sit and uh, say about the laurels when i was in access bank i used to do like this i used to do that you know now i am a i mean like any other advocates and you know practicing in the court and advising the clients and arguing the cases you know it's not that an armchair practitioner sitting and turning turning out uh, documents and sitting there so i appear before the courts and that is the story and i'm quite satisfied now because i never knew that uh, i had certain inherent capacity or you know in me or inherent strength in me and i would think that that was brought to my uh, i mean it came out because i left my native place and came to this place and there i mean no godfathers you have to survive and therefore you know you have to do this you know so this is my journey and i'm here and uh, i'm quite enjoying my stint and now i'm partner with uh, sng and partners and uh, heading their uh, litigation practice and dispute resolution practice in mumbai and i have a team of about 10 lawyers with me and i'm quite enjoying it and every day i'm looking forward for uh, to attend the courts why the virtually or physically i would love to go for a physical hearing now the i court has started so i go there so this is my journey here so for me is i forget about i don't i have switched off from my uh thinking as a executive so that doesn't come to me uh, i mean that doesn't come to me because that ego if it comes you know i'll be a failure as an advocate so that ego is completely gone we need more people like you um mr gopal krishnan and thank you so much for giving us an elaborate explanation of your journey and i'm sure many people who will be watching this they can they can actually relate to the journey of yours because how you were you know into literature and then your parents yeah. to, you know go for something else entirely 
uh, please tell us about your most memorable case or cases per se uh, and what are your key takeaways from there. Yeah, the most memorable cases is that, you know, as I said, in Axis Bank, I was always the troubleshooter for the management, especially the MD and the uh, executive director or the management. If anything happens, you know, they will call Gopal, go and settle it, you know, that kind of, you know, go and do it. So the most memorable case, I would say, is that, you know, uh, Access Bank, at the time it was known as UTI Bank, had a merchant banking division in, uh, in the bank. Because according to the law, you can have a merchant banking division, and but that will also be regulated not only by RBI, which regulates the bank, but also you have to take a Class A certificate or license from SEBI. So UTI Bank at that point of time was a uh, SEBI regulated Class A uh, uh, licensee for merchant bank. So what the merchant bankers do is to facilitate deals. So uh, our Calcutta office uh, had a merchant banking division. So most of the public sector like Sale um, and uh, Jute Corporation of India and others, they wanted to invest their money, that is the provident fund money in government bonds, government securities. So they approached uh, uh, the Axis Bank or UTI Bank at that point of time. And we facilitated a deal for buying these government securities through a broker called Home Trade. It is a very uh, notorious thing. You know, he was arrested and all those things. And, you know, so some of the people down there, you know, they did it in good faith. And uh, we are not promising, the bank doesn't did not promise that, you know, I will give the security. It is only a facilitation and uh, what the bank gets is only the facilitation fees, irrespective of the, the amount of deal. If it is 10 crores also, I'll get only X amount. If it is 1 rupee also, I'll get the same amount. You know. So the home trade did not deliver these goods, deliver these uh, uh, securities. So time passed, it is a government of India institution, they came on. One single, simple boy sitting there, he was a deputy manager. His friend was also working in home trade. And he wrote down and gave and said that, you know, we will end, end, uh, we will end cost to ensure that the securities are delivered. But the securities never delivered. Home trade was uh, uh, found to be in uh, doldrums. And, you know, as a result, an FIR was filed by them in the Kolkata uh, banking, uh, CID banking unit. And one fine morning, uh, they came and uh, to arrest one of our uh, senior officials who are uh, who is in Calcutta branch. So uh, I, he was arrested, but I could get a bail immediately and saying that you know I will produce him before the Calcutta uh, Calcutta court uh, before the uh, police police uh, authorities at the point of uh, uh, I mean investigation. Then what happened is uh, something. Then I was asked to settled uh, i was asked to deal with the police so i went to uh, the lal bazaar that is the headquarters of police in calcutta it is called lal bazaar i it was a red building so it is called lal bazaar they call it as lal bazaar so i went there and you know i was taken inside and it was about 10 10 30 and uh, i was sitting there and then the police were dealing with me and you know we dealt and dealt and dealt you know no and as, as a result you know at that point of time the mobile phones did not have the charger or, you know, backup or anything like that. You know, it was that antenna type, you know. So my mobile phone was not working. Nothing was working. And, you know, so I was negotiating it. And, you know, we made a decision that we will return that money. So it belongs to the public sector and, you know, the employees provident fund. And therefore, you know, till 11 o'clock in the night, I was in the police station and, uh, uh, I mean, I cannot put it on uh, in the police headquarters. I can't put it on record, you know, because they were following me everywhere. And, you know, and as if I'm the culprit and, you know, but ultimately we solved that case. And I came out of the, the headquarters at 1130 in the night and we solved that case. And after that, the police became very friendly with me. And uh, this act that, I, I mean, a legal officer going and settling and, you know, coming back, and uh, that enhanced my uh, my capabilities or, you know, my, I would say, uh, my value in the bank. That was a very a big issue because I can never forget that. 
because uh, uh, it involves about uh, 16 crores of rupees and you know we could settle it and you know the no reputational loss was caused to the bank and therefore you know everything was intact because the share price otherwise if the news comes out you know it will be very very bad and that is one of the cases but if you have time one more case i will tell you is uh, yes please go ahead yeah yeah one more case is that you know uh, we have access bank had a branch in jabalpur so <clears throat> Jabalpur branch, uh, I mean, in the, it's in the state of Madhya Pradesh. So Madhya Pradesh has a uh, Madhya Pradesh Apex Cooperative Bank. So that is a cooperative credit bank where, where government gives them subsidy. And that subsidy is parked till the next COP. So that subsidy has to be paid to the farmers and therefore they get the uh, subsidy from the government. And that is taken by the cooperative bank and is parked in public sector banks or private sector banks during that interim period of two or three months. And they invite bids for that because it's a large amount. It was about 50 crores. They invite a bid for that. And then, you know, what happened is suddenly Bhopal branch of Axis Bank and Jabalpur Bank a branch of Axis Bank both applied for it. But, you know, somebody Jabalpur branch got it. Okay. So Jabalpur branch got that 50 crores and then they gave a certificate of deposit to the uh, the cooperative bank so naturally there is no doubt about it but ultimately what happened is that certificate was not issued through the system yeah, out of 50 numbers it had only 14 numbers so the system doesn't catch it that amount was parked in another account called uh, narmata vikas paryojana phase 3 and that was a fraud committed by the branch manager and somebody from the Madhya Pradesh corporate, uh, Apex Cooperative Bank and a third party. And they formed this and, you know, they opened the account. So inspections did not deal anything. And, you know, nobody questioned it. Then suddenly what happened is one fine morning, we got a news that income tax authorities have visited the branch and has frozen this 50 crores. The reason was income tax authorities were suspecting they got a news that Madhya Pradesh Apex Cooperative Society is getting some funds from abroad and therefore a money laundering may be the uh, aspect may be there and therefore they came and froze in the account, froze the account. So we sent our team for inspection and found out that, you know, that was a account which was opened without the consent or, you know, with by following, uh, not following the uh, rules and regulations. And the certificate issued to the Madhya Pradesh Apex Cooperative Bank was a different certificate outside the system. And of which this branch manager and his cronies have taken three crores. That money was taken basically to um, um, set up some beauty parlor for the branch manager's wife and, you know, some uh, land he was purchased and, you know, all these things, you know. So I'll come to the HR aspect of that, you know. So suddenly, as usual, I was asked to go there. And then, you know, we wanted to file a complaint against those branch managers and uh, uh, the complaint was filed and we, uh, I mean, got it registered and investigation started and he was arrested and that 47 crores of rupees, which was lying, you know, they froze it and we had to go all the way to Supreme Court to get it defrozen. But we paid on February when the date came, we paid to the Mahara Madhya Pradesh Apex Cooperative Society in terms of the certificate because that is an indoor management they are not bothered about it there is otherwise there will be a reputation loss and this case went on for everything and the police suspected that 50 crores of amount means it's a big amount and therefore the managing director at that time it was shika sharma or you know all of us were involved in it and therefore you know he wanted to take the statement of everybody he wanted all of us to go there that i prevented because i didn't take uh, the cmd at any point of time to any police station uh, i mean therefore you know ultimately the money was got and you know the matter is uh, was uh, completely uh, under the legal process and these people were punished and uh, our laws was uh, limited to about three crores of rupees you know so this also the entire thing was uh, completely uh, given to me and you know i have done you know there are plenty of cases you know see i don't like to go on and go on you know that becomes a little uh, too bad for me to tell uh, more and more about me but all i say is that whatever i learned today and whatever i am worth is all practical experience i mean the books doesn't give you anything the books only says the law it is a practical experience as i said earlier 
when I go to the court, and you know, the more I learn from the court is much more, you know, because the what you learn and you know when you argue a case, the questions comes is not something pre-planned and premeditated. So you have to answer that, and you know, therefore, you know, you have to be a practical man. And I am I was always known in the bank as a man who gives a solution, and I took a risk. Let me tell you. Uh, I don't think that anybody of my nature would have taken the risk which I have taken in all cases. So, accordingly, the HR aspect was also there. A lot of HR cases were there, you know, that took me to the uh, completely uh, the facade of a human being and how your upbringing and how your background affects you. That is also something which is known to me because, you know, I was involved in many such cases inside the banks as a disciplinary authority or, you know, as a man who has been able to see the entire papers and, you know, suggest uh, um, uh, what kind of actions were to be taken. And therefore, you know, a rich experience, I would say that was a big platform. So I repeat and say that my mentors there and, you know, the trust which Access Bank as it stood there, you know, placed on me, that is what I am and, you know, nothing else. And, you know, that practical experience <laughs> gives me the strength and you know that full speak. Uh, I mean honestly I'm loving every bit of this conversation and uh, the terrific cases that you have handled so nicely and I'm sure uh, as I've mentioned earlier many people will be able to relate to this because I'm sure everybody has their own experience but being lawyers they would relate to it for sure. Um, my last question to you would be, uh, you have been into the corporate for a very long time now. Uh, so how do you think that, uh, how do you look at corporate law basically? I'll talk about the past in 2020 specifically because that has been a crazy year. And also how is it going to change five years down the line? Actually, if you look at the uh, major development in uh, the corporate law, uh, which was uh, something, you know, thanks to Arun Jaitley, and his team who has introduced this uh, IBC, that is, you know, uh, Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code, that was a great law. That is still a great law, I would say. And, you know, we were all uh, very happy because, you know, without the intervention of a civil court or a high court, you know, we can get a solution, a company which is uh, unable to pay his debt is taken to a corporate insolvency resolution process. and. Uh, that can be filed by a financial creditor or by an operational creditor or even the company itself can go and uh, file it if I am unable to pay my debts. So that was something nice because, you know, it uh, reimposed the faith in the Indian judicial system for foreign investors that I can get an easy exit. Otherwise, what happens is, you know, easy exit was not uh, available. But 2020, 19, 16 onwards, you know, we were all gaga over it and you know uh, majority of my practice was also in that and you know so 2020 came and uh, then came the spoke and you know now uh, the filing of a case uh, yeah, uh, under the IBC is uh, now uh, I mean it is uh, 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 what do you call it? the government has come out with a notification that till December uh, or till March you know you cannot file any uh, fresh cases because that is the thing so that creates a little mistrust again because you bring the beautiful law and after that you know you also say is that you know don't do that you know you have a, a, a what do you call a very good uh, uh, wrestler at home and you know you are not uh, taking him to any um, uh, event saying that you know no don't go that you know we'll go after some time so that means you know the the real faith in that gets lost so that is something which i feel that was not a good idea. It would have been a temporary thing, maybe for two or three months. And after that, it should have continued. But I do not know. Now the lobby is working. And uh, as a result, you know, many of the banks are also taking advantage of this because uh, they have to declare it as an NPA and go to uh, the in, uh, NCLT. Otherwise, now they can do is, you know, they can keep it off by declaring it as an NPA so that books are completely different. And, you know, they can restructure it. And... Uh, RBI has also come out with certain regulation uh, rule, uh, certain circulars which uh, enables you to, uh, re, uh, uh, I mean, complete resolution outside the process of going to any other issue. So many of the uh, uh, industries or many of the business people are taking advantage of that. You know, I do not know because today I read in the paper that you know, maybe by March uh, or the end 
the NPA level of banks may rise to 14%. You know, that is something which, you know, doesn't uh, give good uh, uh, idea to a depositor to put money in the bank, you know, because that means your bank is at uh, any stage of uh, the, uh, any stage your bank can go fund because, you know, NPA levels are going up. You know? So that was one good uh, act. <coughs> and still it is working as far as the mergers and acquisitions and, you know, other things are concerned, that is working. You know, I'm not saying that, you know, it is there. So I think, you know, more infrastructure has to be provided and more and more uh, nice members has to be uh, yeah, recruited. So today, uh, some people are recruited after retirement and, you know, for some time. So I think, you know, the uh, it has completely a revamp has to be there and, you know, it has to be time bound. Uh, I mean, a lot of pending cases are there and, you know, therefore it has to be time bound. And this is one thing. And second thing is that, you know, uh, still a lot of thing has to be done in arbitration. You know, arbitration is something which we are all saying that, you know, we amended the act many a times thinking that, you know, India will become a center for international arbitration. That is not happening. Still the interference of the courts are there and, you know, and um, now, Due to the pandemic, you know, the entry orders passed by the courts are being taken and, you know, that is it. So I think uh, that uh, the essence of a law is not in the contents. It is all like how it is practiced and, you know, put to use. As I said, you may be a doctor or you may be a licensed driver, but uh, the fun comes only when you drive or when you practice. You know, otherwise, you know, you may have all kinds of degrees and, you know, you sit at home. An academician, you say things, you know, that is not going to happen. You know? So I think, you know, uh, the judicial overreach for uh, arbitration and such other things, they themselves should think that, you know, the economy has to be given importance and, you know, certain things, they should not interfere on uh, certain minor points or, you know, certain citing some, some kind of a technical points, you know, that is, uh, that will not be a good thing for the economy. And uh, I think uh, the economy is not bad. When we are talking uh, in law, which was nicely implemented, is also now kept in abeyance for some time. You know, that is the farm laws. You know, I do not know the reason, but I'm not going into it because, you know, I don't, I, I, I have not seen the order which was passed. You know, So such impediments by judicial, uh, judiciary is something which needs to be curbed, I would say. I, I'm, I'm very... Uh, uh, I mean, Frank in saying that, you know, because, you know, if there is something wrong in it, you know, you can correct it. But, you know, uh, at the drop of a hat, you know, because in any, in India, if you pass any law, there is uh, somebody who is saying that, you know, it is not good because any law will not be good for one person, one set of people and it will be good for another set of people. Like uh, <coughs> somebody says that today is a good day for me, for another, it may not be a good day because, you know, something bad may happen to him or her and today I may get some good thing I may say that today is a good day for me and the other day is not good for me. So these are things which needs to be uh, taken into consideration and I'm sure that you know going as you go along uh, in the next five years and you know IBC will revive and definitely will revive and unless uh, uh, the government puts some certain spokes and I think you know uh, it's going to be a uh, uh, it's not, uh, uh, I mean, I wouldn't uh, say it is going to be a bad uh, uh, phase which is going to come. And uh, it is definitely a good period. And as the economy booms and, you know, the infrastructure is coming up and, you know, a lot of infrastructure changes are there. And I think uh, we need to move into alternate mode of uh, dispute resolution uh, very quickly. And, you know, that should be made compulsory. And many of the courts have now that in commercial, the mediation is necessary. So this will clog and um, this will uh, definitely remove the clogs in the courts. And courts will have much more time in deciding on other issues. And uh, I think, you know, a lot of privatization is coming because many of the private sector companies, uh, public sector companies are being privatized. That is also a good uh, issue. I think, you know, uh, I do, I foresee a good period uh, in the next five years if the momentum continues like this. And I'm not deterred by what happened in 2020 because uh, human uh, race has always overcome all obstacles. So if you have any obstacle, we will overcome in OK. Uh, I mean, now the vaccine comes and definitely after that, I do not know if another virus comes also, the vaccine may come. 
so we have to pass through this and then i think you know i always am a mm-hmm. uh, uh, optimist and you know i feel that you know, all good things will come and the economy will bloom and you know for lawyers it is going to be a good uh, they think only thing is that they have to concentrate and the more and more uh, specialization is coming into it and therefore you know they have to concentrate you know that you know like you know i getting into everything and everything will not be there you know because i will not get into anything which is of a criminal law because i know that you know i'm not uh, uh, experienced in that you know because my practical experience was always in uh, uh, the commercial law and tax laws and you know therefore i think and uh, tax law when you say that you know i didn't uh, get into gst because that was not my cup of tea because you know it is a little complicated law so i didn't get into it you know so that is it so i think you know it's a good time concentrate and uh, you have to uh, be uh, committed to what you are doing wow that was quite an insight for people who are not even from the legal industry i guess everybody will get to learn a lot from this interview so thank you so much for sharing uh, such great insights uh, with us mr gopal krishnan and we really look forward to having a chat with you again in future on maybe some other trending topics in the international legal industry and uh, for our viewers if you like this chat with mr gopal krishnan please like and share this video and also subscribe to click away creators youtube channel to appreciate what we exactly do and you have more coming from industry leaders this is bharti for lex talk signing off